Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters listening to us. Once again, we want to take this opportunity to welcome you to the waves of Prime Radio. Thanking you for sparing this time to move on with us in the word of God. We shall be continuing on with our study for a couple of days from now. And we want to encourage you to be present as you also invite others to be with us in this COVID crusade on Prime Radio. The Lord has a message even for us. Mukama, even for this hour. And without any much ado, allow me to take you directly into our message. By inviting you to get with me to the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and we shall consider verse 2. Reading from the New King James Version, the Bible says, Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. Today we want to consider uh, a topic and subject that we shall delve into uh, called the vanity of life. The vanity of life. And before we go any further, may I invest the request that we bow our heads in prayer. Heaven Father, a special moment is here once again before us from your throne room of heaven. We want to thank you for the privilege that is ours to Listen as we also meditate upon your word. We want to thank you that you've chosen us to be vessels of thine in the communication of your word at such an hour as this. Qualify us and purge all draws out of us that we may be worthy vessels for the communication of your word to your people. As we have your way and speak through us to your people, Heaven Father. And we pray that may you reach over through your spirit to every listening ear that you richly bless them as you prepare them to receive your word. Thwart the wiles of the enemy from your people so that they may listen unhampered from any distractions to the glory of your name. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this special moment. Make your word relevant and applicable to our lives. That we will come to the end of this message praising and thanking you that you have spoken to us. Glory be to you now and forevermore. We pray Amen. The vanity of life. Jewish writings of the wise men. Perceive that a person's life is divided into seven stages. And these seven stages of life characterize the process of living from birth to 
nge mitende la jino jisi mbukira dalo mtu luazari wana kwa kutaka okutuka luasomu kwa kwa merilo. When they try to describe each of the stages that a person go through nga bagiza kwa kunyo nyola no kulambulu laburu unji nyo mtende la kwa wali mtu kwa itama. And the characteristics of that particular stage. Nene iseyo mtende la kwa. The first stage is from the from birth to the age of 2 omutendero gusoka gwe 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 kuva kuzalibwa okutuka ku myaka and this is called the king stage kino guno omutendero guyitibwa gwe bwa kabaka it's called the king stage because this is the time when a person is served from hand to foot and his every whim is provided for by the parents and all the people around them guno gwe mutendera omukubanga omuntu abala bilirwa bulabirirwa gabirirwa bugabirirwa pampas chusibwa buchusibwa buli chintu chonna nga chimukolerwa bukolerwa so from birth to age 2 is called the king stage okuva ku kuzali bwo kutuka ku mwako gwo kubiri guno mutendera bagoyita gwa bwa kabaka obakabaka but from ages 3 to 9 Okuva ku mwako ogwo kusatu okutuka ku gwo mwenda it is referred to as the pig years you know oje mutendera guyitibwa be myaka jino giyitibwa jambizi because as his life shows up this person becomes messy about everything and has little sense of responsibility wano mutendera guno gwa kuonona gwa kuyiwa buli kantu gwa kuyuza buli ka kwatako gwa kuonona These people can mess themselves up like a pig does. Wana beranga kabizi bwachi kwata na chiwa bwajira na biyusa bwakola bwayonona na kwata. And so it's referred to as the pig years from 3 to 9. Uno mutendero kuva ku mwako gwo kusatu kutuka ku gwo mwenda guhitibwa mbizi. But from ages 10 to 15, okuva ku mwako gwe 10, okutuka ku gwe 15. The wise men call these the goat years. Abagezi gezi guno mutendera baguita gwambus because the person runs all over the place in aggression like a goat exploring and also in confusion o muntu atambula nga bwola be mbuzi nga agenda ikwata china kwata chiri nga anonyereza ku china anonyereza ku chiri yenanga atabudwa tabudwa like a goat they are unruly and exploring nge mbuzi bwoji manyi eline mpaka tekiriza e walira era nabo omwaka emyaka jino bwe babera so 10 to 15 the god here je emyaka jino 10 okutuka ku 15 from 16 to 25 okuva ku gwe kumi no mukago okutuka ku gwa 2 mwe 5 they are called the horse years jine emyaka jo jiitwa jambalasi uh, and these are years full of energy jino no je emyaka omuntu wabanga yalina amanyi ye ulire eryanyi it's during this time that the person is fast and seeking for position and meaning especially with the opposite sex wano labo omuntu nga anonye ebichifi ebitibwa ebifo atera waberelanga anonya abantu abechukule kitali chiche seeking for identity ngana ya yagalo okumanyika so they are called the horse years wano yitibwe myake jembalas from ages 26 to 40 Okuva ku mwako ogwabiri mwo mukago kutuka kugwana they are called it's called the dog stay oh yeah mutendera guno guyitibwa gwambwa the person is fast but also burdened down Omuntu wana abamwangu nyo 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 na yenga atari na nebi mustowere de binji as they try to make their way in this world to make some remarkable significance ngabala bafuba no kulaba ngababa kole bye bakola emikulo je bale kamunsi these are years of actualization and years of trials miaka eje bigeze binji atene miyako kulaba ngababa kole bye batuka kole bayituka but there are also years of failures atera mutendera guli mwe okulemwa because these people have not amassed much experience but uh, they have strength and energy wisdom and knowledge kubanga baba tebanna bakufuna bukugubumala atenga namanya gamala namageza gamala so okulemwa kubabera kumpi 26 to 40 dog years abiri mukago kutuka kwana guno mwaka gwambwa from 41 to 60 Okuva kugwana mu gumo kutuka kugwana kugwenka ba. Uh, it's called the cow stage. Abagezi gezo mutendera guno baguyita gwante. A person reaches his awful height and starts however to slow down a little bit. Omuntu abatu se kubuwanvu dalabwo no obuwanvu bwe bwe nnyo obwaddala 
They have amassed enough experience in life. Uh, they have reached their full stature in life, in achievements. And they have started to slow down. They have missed a number of chances at this stage. But still have dreams and are trying to make final touches in life. 41 to 60, the cow stage. The final stage is from ages 61 till death. And this is called the ape stage. He, the person is beaten down. They have realized the good things in life and somehow have the, the good things in life have somehow escaped them. At these stages, they, they, they are full of wishes and regrets. At this stage, people are speaking in the past tense most of the time. And it's called the ape stage. So these are the seven stages. Yeah, the king stage. The pig stage, the goat stage, the horse stage, the dog stage, the cow stage, and the ape stage. All these supposed stages of, of, of human existence. But they also raise one important question of life. When you look at all these stages, the question is, what is the purpose and meaning of life? What is the purpose of your existence? The book of Ecclesiastes attempts to answer that important question of the purpose and meaning of life. Does your life have any real purpose and meaning? How can I find real satisfaction and success in life? This may be questions that we would love to dodge because they are not easy to answer but very unavoidable. But a few years ago, Social scientists at Job Hopkins University in the U.S. Surveyed 8,000 graduating students who were graduating in their final year of university These 8,000 students were drawn and sampled from 50 different universities. And they were in their final year. And these Hop, Job, Hop, John Hopkins University social scientists we are out to ask one very important question to these graduating students. John Hopkins University. The question was, what do you consider to be very important to you as you graduate and get into life in the world? They were so kind that they tried to float a number of suggestions to these graduating students. And some of them were 
no. to make money sente, to get married kufumbirwa obakuwasa is, is it to get a job kufuna muri mucho twalanga chechu is it to buy a home a mortgage okwegulira makama lunji cho twalanga chechu is it to buy a car okwegulire moto kenunji chechu is it is it to enjoy life obo kunyumirwa obulamu or to find purpose in life obo kujule chegende lwe cho obulamu so they posed a number of alternatives baba we byo kulonda ke byenja ulo as to what they thought among those was the most important thing in life. Interestingly to say that there were a number of students that took different uh, different items from those. But what is so surprising that an overwhelming 75% of the 8000 students from 50 universities They said that their first goal and priority in life was to find purpose and meaning in life. Bagamba ntibanonya kigendererwa Brothers and sisters true education baganda bagenda banyinazi okutendeke bwokwa namadala should be able to prepare a person to be able to ask this important question of life why am i here kulino kubanga kuyamba omuntu okwebuza ekibuzo nti lwachi ndi what is the purpose of my life lwachi makuru chi agobula mu why am i here lwachi ndi wano where am i going yenda gawa what should i do in life yengwa ni de kola chimu bulamu buno and these well graduate well prepared students abayizi bano bali bamaze emyaka ejuwera mu setende kerage njawulo ngabatendekedwa bulunji had gone through confusion had gone through disorientation in life but had been brought back in pieces together and when asked that question of life of the true of, of the true purpose of life they were able to get it right the authorship of the book of Ecclesiastes is said to be Solomon. Solomon is generally accepted as the writer if you go in chapter 1 and verse 1 of this book. Bogenda mumubulize sule soko nyolusoka daladala waka kasanti Suleman ye yawandike kitabo. In Ecclesiastes Solomon applies himself to the profound question of the meaning purpose and value of life. Muchitabo chile cha mubulizi. Suleman ye nyini agiongero kubuza ekibuzo kino. Amakuru gobula muge galiwa. Omugaso gobula mugwe guliwa. Solomon is pursued in this book. Muchitabo chile cha mubulizi. Suleman ngafubo kunonya. What is the purpose and value of life? Ekigendererwa na omugaso gobula mu chechi. Why are you born? Why are you living? What are you here for? What is the purpose of life? Where are you coming from and where are you going? If you were to die today, what would you say you lived for? What is your purpose for living? Friends, the writer of the book of Ecclesiastes tries to pursue, explore, and research on this important question. I want to invite you so that we may take a journey of exploration together with the writer of Ecclesiastes and see if we can see eye to eye if also a purpose is like the writer of this book. Can to sabe mugana ngere mwanyi na zampuliriza tutambulire wa mu kitabo kino cha mubulizi tulabire dalala wa munga ne Sulemani bwa yalaba amakuru go bulamu ge galiwa. The writer of this book sums up his findings. Omuwandisiwe kitabo kino mubulizi agumba umba okunonyereza kwe in just one word Muchigambo chim. One one sums up chimu. the entire book. E chitabo chonachi umba umba muchigambo chim. And that word is vanity. 
He set that book, that, that word at the beginning of the book. In chapter 1, verse 2. And in the concluding chapter 12, verse 8, to an extent that this word brackets the entire book of Ecclesiastes, beginning and end. So as, as our, our, our reading was vanity of vanities. Says the vanity of vanities, all is vanity. And that verse 1. And verse 12, the concluding chapter, chapter 12 and verse 8, he says, Vanity of vanities, says the preacher, all is vanity. Let me read it again. This word vanity upon which the theme of Ecclesiastes pans is repeated 38 times in this little book. Compared to the, to, to the fewer times that this word is found in the book in the entire Old Testament, which is only 35 times. So in one book, it's mentioned 38 times. Uh, yet elsewhere in the book, only 35. That tells you that for you to understand the book of Ecclesiastes, you need to get to this word vanity, which is repeated over and over. The Hebrew word translated vanity by some of the English versions like King James Version and others. It is, it is rendered variously and differently from other English translations. I want to try my translator here and see if we can be able to get into a sample of some of other English translations and see how this book is rendered, this word is rendered. Amen. In the NIV it is the new international version and also the new literal uh, living translation. This word is not translated as vanity but as meaningless. Mu NIV ne NLT church no te chuchusibwanga butalimu but meaningless. Yet you come over to the New English translation in the New Jerusalem Bible. This one is translated as futile. New English translation. As sampled another version of the CJB in that one translates it not as vanity, but as Pointless. When you come over to today's English version, that's the Good News Bible, mm. and that one translates it as useless. Good News Bible, another version called the BBE will translate it as worthless. BBE, and so you go, over, you go over to these various Bible tra English translations and you will be able to understand that uh, this word is variously 
mistranslated. Bwogenda mu bichuse ebyolungereze ebyenjawulo olaba nge kigambo kino obutalimu kigenze kichusiba mu ngeri ezenjawulo zetulabye. Now for Bible students I am a Bible student and a, a professor of the Old Testament also but for whenever you come to such a verse that is variously translated Eriye abayizi ba Bible nange kennyini ndi muyizi wa Bible na yebuli rwosange ekigambo bolunyiriri olugenze luchusi luchusi bwa mu ngeri ezenjawulo by the way may i also point out that uh, it is always good to have as many versions on your desk as possible wana abagalo wenjagalo kubategereza nti kirungi nyo eri mu abampuliriza okubana ebichusa bya bible ebyenjawulo there are some people who are stuck on some versions of the bible thinking that only those are inspired eri abamu abalemedde ku bible yechikechimu nze nsoma kisosonkole nze nsoma kino nedda and people have gotten into battles over or over translations and versions abantu abamu ne batandike entalo olwo kigambo tinedda wana yachichusa bwati kubanga tebasoma ako bichusa byanjalo za all sovereignty ezo zonna ne entalo zonna enkaya ne ezo zonna butalimu it is good that you have a sample of as many as many versions of the bible as possible wano wemba gambira ntibera ne bichusa bya bible yebiwerako and that is a bible student oyo yabero mu yisi wa bible get your vernacular bible Bible, your local language fate ya yorulimi olusalira anu aluo if your privilege for english go and get as many versions as you can bobanga ate wafuna ku mukisano yigo oluzungu gendo somebe bichuse byenja ule byoluzungu and uh, for our pastors in training we also take them higher and deeper into what we call the biblical languages na basumba bali mukutendekebwa nabo tubatwala ne bongero okuyiga nokukenkuka mu nnimi Bible you will be able to understand that a sample of one of the like this verse will be able to give you various words Olaba nti olunyiriringa luno mu Bible lukuwe ebigambo ebirala ebyenjawule ebiwera A wide range of semantic uh, of semantic synonyms Olaba ebigambo ebyenjawule ebigenda bichefana nyiriza similar but deeper and different in emphasis Ngabifana nako na yenga atebigazi mu nnyinyo nyala And whenever you come to a verse which verse is so variously rendered with different synonyms Buli rosango olunyirira mu Bible ngaluli na ebigambe ebyenjawule ebirale ebichifanana whereby you see that uh, each translation does not agree sim- exactly with the other ngolaba anti buli chichusa ate kirabikanga te chikanya na chilala you should know that there is a problem in the original text olinmanya nti waliwe chizibu ne mpandike liye nyine ya shokera dala mwe bajja and the e problem chikambi. is not a negative problem echi enjawulo teba anti mbi the problem is that the word that they are trying to pick and the fetch from the original is deeper and wider than any english word to describe it chiba chitegeza anti chigambe cho lulimi olunasangwa bwe bachija chigazinyo okusinge byoluzungu to an extent that there's no one word which can equate the true heavy hebrew or greek word ngolaba anti teri yo chigambo chimu cha luzungu ekisobola okumatiza ekigambe cho lutole blania obecho lyona and so here you will see that the word is vanity but the other version says no vanity may not be a right to translation na yatu olaba bachusa abalala bagati cho butalimu siche chandi badde chigambe chisingo meaningless describes it better na yobu tabana makulu ate chichinyonyola bulungi another one says no futile is better obu tabana mulamwa na chochinzo says no i think pointless is the hebrew word obutaba na nsonga na cho chinzo kubandoza che chisingo boku another one says no i think useless is the word obutaba na mugaso ndoza che chinzo and another one comes and says worthless should be the description omuwa omuvunzo malaga nendo zo obutaba na muwendo 
cha chisinga ko for you to understand what the hebrew word is out to inspire us to understand kakati gwo kutegerera dale chigambo cho lwebulania chechali chitegeza you need to bring all those words together oli no kugate bigambo binobyo <laughs> lebe them in one package obiteke mukutie mu understand all of them obitegere and after understanding all of them together bo mala byo no bitegera you will just be coming closer to understanding the other word which still will be far away olo je kubogeza ko kushemberere chigambo chiri mwe baje bigambo binobyo na naye ngachola bachichali wala to cut the long story short mobufunze there is an a, a hebrew enigmatic word which is being fetched from there waliwe chigambe chisimbudwa mulwebulania and the word is hebel e chigambo bachiita hebel and hebel did not something which is transitory hebel chitegeze chintu echiri mumugendo something which is fleeting e chintu echigenda something which describes a state of emptiness e chintu echirage mbere yobutali hebel describes something which is in a state of nothingness e bero chinyonyole chintu echitali na something which has no profit profitless e chintu echitali na magoba worthless or useless e chitali na muwendo and that is the word hebel something passes by it has no value something which fleets by and something which is empty something which is nothing hebel chitegeze chitwe chiita echitali na makuru echitali na mugaso so that is the word that uh, the versions are trying to capture hebel che chigambo cho lwebulania ebichusa bine byoluzungu bye chebigezaako okugezaako kunnyonyola literally the word hebel means vapor echigambo hebel echo lwebulania chitegeza muka that vapor o breath omukogu in that vapor you you see it omukogu ogulaba but sometimes you may not see it atolu soyinzo obutabula but it is there nenga we guli vapor omuka Even when you see it you can't hold it you can't chase it you can't say i have vapor in my hand but vapor exists nayenga we guli so the word literally means vapor echigambo hebel chitegeza muka so solomon here uses one of the most enigmatic words to describe in our languages chino che chigambo sulemani chageza ko kukatiriza echiri mu bulamu bwa fe mu ngeri ensukurumu but then when he uses it he comes with an emphatic sparative expression when he says it's vanity but of vanities bwaba chogera achogera mu mutendero ogusingira yodala nti waliwo obutali mu obulala na yo obutali mu obusingo obutali mu bwona and this is to assert that everything in life in all life in fact completely and extremely is worthless wano chanyonyola tie bintu byonna mu bolamu wano tie bilina makuru and when he uses the word all which is an inclusive word all bwate kamwe chigamo nti byonna in what he, he tries to describe he's trying to describe everything every activity of life abanyonyola buli ekikolebwa chonna wansu wezo ba so all is vanity byonna butalim all is vanity of vanity we butali singira dalo butalim and when he describes that in chapter in verse 2 baba chinyonyola munyolo kubiri he comes to verse 3 and says what profit as a man mulunyiriryo lokusatu nagamba anti magoba chi omuntu from all his labor which he toils under the sun gajamu mulimu gwe gwonna gwakola wasuwejola the labor wo gwajamu mulimu gwe gwonna i don't know what your toils are all on simanyi gwe mulimu gwa mpuliriza gwokola i don't know what your achievement i mean what what your pursuits in life are are on simanyi gwe byola fuba no kulabanga otuka ko mu bulamu bwo whenever you wake up in the morning i don't know what your goal and 
pursuit and focus and goal in life are. Simanyi buli ruogoloko kakumacha. Bichi, birubi di ruachi, bigende di ruachi, kulafuba na chi kwa itamu. But he says what profit has a man from all those. Na ye chaba, chabu, zizamu linyolo kusatu. Nti magoba achi, omuntu gadja, mumulimu kwa kwenda kwa akola. Life under the sun. He uses the word life under the sun. All work under the sun. Let me take note to describe this word under the sun. Under the sun. It, it's, given, it, it's given in two various meanings. Under the sun means a total is a totality of expression covering everything, every earthly thing or human activity that happens to be wherever the sun shines. Chino wa suenjuba chitegeza buli muli mugono gukorebwa enjuba weyaka under the sun every activity. One enjuba weyaka and Solomon is here saying all human undertakings under the sun are vain, empty, meaningless, futile, useless, profitless, transitory, like vapor or breath. Solomon wano chaka amba chechino. Mtibuli mulimu kwa mwana wa mtu. Ogukore wa wansi wenjuba. Butarimu. Mwerele. Tebuli na makuru. Tebuli na magoba. Tebuli na magoba. Tebuli na mugaso. Guli nga mpewo. Everything this world has to offer is vanity. Buli chintu chona, ensiche kuteka ko, ensiche kutimba ko, butarim. Everything is empty and has no satisfaction. Buli chintu cherele, techimatiza. I don't know what you do. Simanyi kwa mulimu gokola. But I will give you my example. Naweza ka kuwe chokula bila kocha. I've been to school. Nagenda ko kusomero. And when I was starting to going to school. When nalinga ntandi ko kusoma. My goal was to get a bachelor's degree. E chigende ruacha ange kufuna diguli esoka. I know that when I get a bachelor's degree. Naloza ngati bwendi funa diguli. I will be an educated and worthy person of this world. I won't ja kubo musajjo muyigirize asiba bwe chitiwa. I went through toil and labor. Ne mfuba ne nkola ne nsoma. I almost failed financially with many other challenges. But my pursuit was to go and wear that gown and that cape and march as a graduate. I knew that the moment I get there, I uh, I will give a sigh of relief and settle down and celebrate. Nasa chiko wele gaja ando waza wena tuka yonja kuse chiko wentule. Nja kuse. And when we were studying, we went through much. I did theology. Mazima dalabo tuwali tusoma. Tuwa itamubi nji. Na stande kebwa. Matende somo gana gende bini. I studied the Bible from Israel. From Genesis to Revelation. I was taught biblical languages. Hebrew and Greek. I went through church history. I went through SDA doctrine. I went through all other things related to theology. I came graduated when I thought I was high up on cloud. And I thought I knew it all. But the moment I went and graduated, I just realized that uh, it was not worth it. Because when I graduated, I went over to work. But sitting with some elders, with some church members they started to toss me and challenge me with the questions left right little did I know that I didn't know the Bible until then and even the church I didn't know even life who had much to tell me so I purposed that I should go. In fact, my first degree was in India. 
That's why I purpose that I should go for a master's degree. And at this time, I will not go back to India. I said, let me go to, uh, to the West. And where, the, where I thought that I would sit at the feet of real seasoned professors. I went to the UK. For a master's degree. I started. And uh, I went and sat before real seasoned men. I wanted to study the Bible and become a master of Bible. But uh, when, it, it, when, two, when I just started, they told me you cannot study the entire Bible. Choose one of the one of the either the Old Testament or New Testament. You can't be a master of the entire Bible. It is too big for you. In this appointment. I went to the Old Testament. And I, I went to the class of Old Testament. I studied for two years. Coming to the end of the two years, I had to go for research. And to write a book. And when I went there, they told me, I, I went and, 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 and I wanted to research on all the Old Testament. When I took care of was that I went to research on all the Old Testament. I, I give in my research proposal and titled The Theology of the Old Testament. From Genesis to Malachi. I take it to the professor and the professor looks at it. He looks at it and says thank you. Uh, but uh, you go back. Because you cannot do this. It is too big for you. Go back and choose either one book or section. So I, chose, I went back in this appointment and chose the book, I mean the section called the Torah. The, the, the Pentateuch, the books of Moses. And there I wrote the theology of the Pentateuch. And took back again to the professor. The professor looked at it and this time he crossed it down. And he told me this still is too big to and narrow. Go and narrow down your talk. I didn't know what to do. But I had to go back. And then I went for the, 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 the book of Genesis. And I wrote the theology of the book of Genesis. And uh, when I went there, I took back the proposal. The professor still looked in my eyes. He told me to go back and narrow it. Further. You cannot manage that. I ended up going to just but a small section of Genesis. And that is where I mastered. I come back. When I Uganda. To Bugema, in fact. And started teaching here. And uh, later on, I do realize that there is much that I didn't know. And so, Bugema organizes to send me back again. And friends, I went. To cut the long story short, I was able to graduate with a PhD in theology. But do you know that uh, they narrowed me further not only to a book, not only to a verse, 
but only to two words. Siku kitabo si lunyiriri na yo kunonyereza kwenda kola kudigulia yo kusatu. Chali bigambo bibiri byoka. And I became a doctor of theology of two words. Nefu ka doctor mu byedini owe bigambo bibiri byoka. Mubaibuli. The question is how many books of the Bible are there? Naye chibuzo chirindi. Bible yeri mwe bitabo bimeka abatuuliriza. How much do I know? Yeka akati nze manyiche nkana wa. How many verses are in the Bible? Nyiriri mekazi ni msangi ba mubaibuli. How many verses do I know? Nyiriri mekaze manyi. How many words are in the Bible? Bigambo bimeka bisangi ba mubaibuli. How many words do I know? Bigambo bimeka ye kwa ebyo bye manyi. I only know two. Nze manyi ko bibiri byoka. And even those two Nebe byenyi de bibiri. I cannot exhaust them. Sisobola kubimala yo. What does this mean? Kino kitegeza ati. Vanity of vanities. Obutali mo bo obutali mo bonna. I graduate and realize it's just but a paper. Na tunatikirwa na yena chizula anti lupapula bo papula. It's just but a title. Chitirwa. But nothing in it. Nyinga temuli. When you consider how much one puts in and how much effort and finances and the like and uh, you, you come to the end and realize Bola bo muntu ensimbi za tadde muno obudde naye ku nkomerero no kizula That all is vanity Ntibyo nabutalim Dalasiki Munonyi The kingdom of God Obwaka bakabo akatonda May God bless you Mukama abawo mukisa Lindi le kitundu ekitala ekiro kirunda ku lwalero kusawa bile ze kiro Na kuruwa lero, echigambo cha katonda chino, chiwagidua, aba blessed family. Yuna vietu lina.